I survived 1000 days in Minecraft Hardcore and I mean like 1000 days on the dot. Yeah, this is not planned at all. So like everyone else does, I compiled all days in one epic movie. If you're watching this video in the background when you're sleeping or working or just watching because you're a beast, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Anyways, enjoy the video and subscribe. It's official, I'm starting a new hardcore world. And I promise you, this world is going to be much better than the first one. I'm not gonna be wasting numerous of episodes on things I can do in one. So this video is gonna have four phases. Phase one is get yourself in the air phase. Like, come on, do I even need to explain this phase? Phase number two is getting infinite amounts of totems of Vendayan and emeralds. This is the inflation does not exist. Here you go, have yourself a raid farm phase. Phase number 3 is getting the best armor slash tools slash weapons aka becoming terminator phase. And then phase 4 is building every single farm I will need in this world and this is the boy tries to be a redstoner phase. And with everything out of the way let's start with this new hardcore world. We're back to the basics of the game. Chop 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 chop. Alright that should be enough for now. Let's get a crafting table, get a wood pickaxe, and some stone of course. And just like that, we got ourselves our tools. I'm gonna use this boat and try to find myself a village. Hopefully I can find one near spawn so I can take it over and live there. Bruh, I forgot about food. Alright village, where are you at? Beautiful, beautiful, we got one. I'm taking over your home, I'm taking over your job, bro, I'm even taking your wife. Okay bro, relax, I'm joking. We got a bunch of hay bills everywhere, so food is not a problem anymore. I'm gonna start forming sugar canes so I can create a bunch of rockets before I go to the end. I heard you haven't paid your taxes this year, so I'm gonna take some stuff from your home. Bro, 10 apples? Even more? This is going to be the spot. Sweet, sweet dreams. I wanna kill the ender dragon as fast as possible, so the first thing I have to do is get obsidian. Well, technically, first I have to get some diamonds. You can call me Mr. Iron, okay? Since I got everything iron, you can call me Iron Man. What a disappointment of a cave is this? It doesn't even go that deep. I got a better idea. I'm gonna try to get diamonds from stranded ships. Ooh, I see you, I see you. This gold is perfect for the nether. Alright, the first ship. Let's see. Oh, we got a diamond! A treasure map, I'm gonna take that. That took way longer than it should have. And uh, no diamond. Come on, bro. Alright, ship. Bless me with a diamond. Yeah, no diamond, but we got a treasure map. Don't mind me taking your gold block. Alright, please give me a diamond. Please, please. Oh my god. This is like the fifth ship. Come on, just give me a diamond. Alright, I have a feeling this is going to be the one. This is going to be the one. Please, 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 please. Bruh. I'm getting so much stuff, but come on, please. All I'm asking is a diamond. Bro, no way. This is the goofiest treasure chest ever. <laughs> oh, no diamond. If I remember correctly, there was a trick with the clay that you can find guaranteed diamonds underneath them. Okay, either the TikTok was fake or this thing is just patched. And scammer gets scammed, buddy. Okay, okay. I, I, I found one. I found one. My diamond. My diamond. <gasps> you can't use gold. Oh! All right, no problem. I got another diamond right over here. Please be more than just one. Please. Oh my god. Alright, three diamonds. Let's get that diamond pickaxe. As soon as I have enough obsidian to get a portal, I'm getting out of here. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna drop off everything I just looted and then we are going to the nether. Alright, alright, let's go. Bro, what a stupid spawn. No way. Never mind, I take my words back. There's another fortress down over there. All it takes is one stupid guest to take me back to the menu. I better be careful in this bridge. Alright, that was easy. I definitely did not poop in my pants. I have to get blaze rods as fast as possible. I do not want to stay any second longer. Perfect, blaze rods. You know what's not that perfect? Almost dying. Oh, no, 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 no. I got more than enough of blaze rods. I'm gonna loot this fortress and then I'm getting out of here. Bad. Good. Very bad. Come on, also bad. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, I, I can't expect a lot. Okay, this, this fortress is just insanely bad. All right, whatever. We got our blaze rods. Now we have to get ourselves some ender pearls. First, I'm going to use all of the gold I have to trade with these guys and try to get some ender pearls. I got about four ender pearls after spending like a stack of gold. This is not good. You know what? I have a better idea. Some people wait for endermen until nighttime. Some people trade with piglings to get ender pearls. But this boy right over here loves to trade them. We got so many apples, we have gold, we can basically turn a villager into a zombie and heal him to get very very cheap ender pills. I'm gonna trap more villagers just to be safe that zombies don't kill any of them. Enjoy your new stay boys. This one right over here will be the villager that's gonna turn into a zombie. Alright, I'm gonna clock him as a cleric. Alright zombie, here you go, have some dinner. Okay, don't hit me. Alright, now we have to create a potion of weakness. We got a potion, we got a golden apple, let's give this guy his life back. While I'm waiting on the guy to turn, I'm gonna destroy this village. Yes, you heard me correctly. I'm gonna destroy this entire village because I wanna live here and I do not want to live in a village. Now I should be able to trade emeralds for ender pearls very cheaply. And there we go. 10 ender pearls. Let's go. I need more emeralds, so I'm gonna create a mason villager, turn him into a zombie to get very, very cheap emeralds for clay. Uh, actually, we don't need to turn this guy into a zombie. We can just straight like this. All right, we got enough of ender pearls. Now I have to wait until it's night time to get phantoms. I need the membrane they drop to brew potions of slow falling. While I'm waiting on phantoms, I'm just gonna destroy this entire place. Oh, I completely forgot about creepers. I also need gunpowder to create rockets before I go to the end. Alright, this is stupid. I've literally almost destroyed this entire village. It's been like three nights and there's still no phantoms. Maybe if I build higher up and just wait, they will spawn? Okay, I just read that phantoms are scared of cats. Now, there are a lot of cats running around over here. So maybe because of that, they don't spawn in the village. So next night, I'm gonna crawl away from the village and maybe then we'll get some phantoms. My theory better be working. I can hear him, I can hear him. Yes, 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 it's working. I I'm so smart, I'm, I'm so smart. All right, membranes are acquired. Now we can go and fight the ender dragon. There's only one house left, so I'm gonna destroy this before I go and do the fight. Would you look at that? I literally destroyed an entire village to get this membrane. I was able to get two sacks of rockets and I think that's enough to loot a bunch of end cities in the end. Let's find that stronghold, boy. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Another one. Come on, come on, come on. Bro. Okay, it went underground, so I guess it's somewhere down over here. Would you take a look at that? I need this cup up later, so I'm gonna get it now so I don't have to come over here again. I can also get some books right over here. And there it is. We found the end portal. Alright, this is it. Oh! Whoa, 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 get away from me, get away from me. Not me waiting five days to get potions of slow falling and then not bringing them to the end. I mean, we all make mistakes sometimes. I think I can take this beehive with a silk dot pickaxe. Yeah, there we go. All right, give him my potions back. All right, everything is ready. Let's get this thing started. Boy, 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 let's go. I'm gonna try to kill this guy as fast as possible, but of course, safety is always number one priority. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna drink one of these guys. First try, let's go. This thing does not want to hit it. Come on, just hit. Oh my god. Come on. Oh, there we go. Can I hit it first try? Nice. As long as I don't get hit, the ones with the bars are easy. This should be the last one. Oh no, never mind. Oh my god, this is the reason why you should have slow falling potions. Man, how are there three more left? I thought I got them all. First try. Nice. Bro, 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 please, 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 please. Chill, 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 chill. Chill. Bro, this guy's following me. Get in the boat. Nice. Please, no, no, no. Please, please, please. Don't, don't let me die like this. Don't let me die like this. Oh. Oh my god, my heart. All right, all of the towers are broken. Now we can start killing the dragon. All right, the fight is pretty easy right now. All we have to do is wait until this guy purges, and then we can hit him really easy. All right, gentlemen, let me hit you a couple of times. I think we only need two more purges, and then we kill the dragon. Come, come, come to me. Die, 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 die. All right, this should be the last purge. Let's kill this guy, get the dragon egg, and then look for an end city, because I need my Elytra ASAP. And there we go. We did it. We killed the dragon. Let's go. Let me block this thing so I can catch all of the XP. 
No, 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 don't go inside of the portal. Stay outside of the portal. All right, there we go. The first item of phase one is gathered. We have the dragon egg. Now we have to go through the end gate to find some end cities. Man, I hope we have good spawns. Bro, hey, no way. <laughs> oh, come on. I don't even have enough blocks, bro. How am I supposed to bridge out and look for an end city? There better be an end city near me because I don't want to keep on bridging everywhere. Imagine I throw myself in the vote. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh, no, 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 no. Man, I have to be careful with ender pearls. I can't mess around with them. Nah, this place is depressing. Like, there's literally nothing over here. Like, I can't wait for an actual end update because we need it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Finally, bro. Finally. This took so long. As soon as I have my elytra, I can find a lot of these guys very, very easy. All right, all right, all right. Uh, nice. And there we go. There it is. Ooh, a diamond shovel. Let's go. But of course, the most important item is the Elytra. There we go. We got the second item of phase one. Technically, phase one is over, but phase one is not done until I looted a ton of end cities. All right, Shulker, can you die, please? Come on, die. Okay, finally. Uh, I'm so hyped to fly. Let's raid every single end city we can find until we don't have any storage left. Right, first chest. Uh, okay, I'll take the looting swords. What do we have? Oh, a diamond pickaxe. Let's go. Yeah, this can turn badly really quickly. I have to be careful. All right, these are the last two shulkers in this end city. Come on. <gasps> what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Chill out, chill out, bro. Why are you, why are you coming over here? Whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, I gotta be careful with these things. Anyways, let's go. Let's go. We are back. Phase one is officially over. The amount of end cities I've looted is insane. Take a look at this chest. Look at the amount of elytras. <laughs> look at the amount of tools. We got more than a stack of shulker shells. This is insane. All right, everything is nice and cleaned up. Now we can start with phase two. In this phase, I'm going to be creating a stacking weight farm. Stacking weight farms will give us access to infinite amounts of emeralds, totems of endiums, redstone, gunpowder, and a lot of other stuff. For those of you that are wondering, what is a stacking weight farm? Well, I'm going to teach you. A second raid farm is a construction that tricks the game into launching numerous amounts of raids at the same time. This farm was designed by the legend ENX04. There's a big tower filled with water and bubbles with villager cells. Every time we hit an armor stand, the bubble chains and they trigger observers. Those observers will trigger pistons and because of that, villagers will keep changing their careers. Whenever a villager changes careers, a new raid starts. Well, at least that's what I think happens. Now raiders can't spawn anywhere else since this entire thing is built on top of an ocean, so they spawn on top. The top is very small, so the normal sized mobs can fall through the base since it's constantly being shifted by pistons. The big boy ravagers can't fall through the hole so they clip in the walls and they burn to death. And yeah, th that was a stack and raid farm. Shout out to enx 4 Bruh, I was about to get the stuff for the raid farm and then I realized something. I don't even have enough villagers to create the raid farm. So I guess I have to make a villager breeder before I can actually make the raid farm. Bro, did you just say I don't need to explain how villagers make babies? Like, come on. I'm the teacher, you're the student. Villagers like to make babies once they have enough food and an extra bed. We can take advantage of their needs by using an easy trick. All we do is lock two villagers in a farm and in one side of the farm we place beds. But here's a trick. Big villagers can't get to the beds because we block them with trap doors. Big villagers start making a baby for the bed. Big villagers make baby. Baby tries to get in the bed, but big hole in front of the baby. Baby fall in the hole, bed no more have villager. So big villagers try again. Make baby, make baby, make baby. This farm was designed by Romer GFX. Go check him out. This farm is really, really easy to create. All we have to do now is get two villagers inside of it. All right, so the first one is in. And the second one is also inside. I actually forgot about the carrots. Uh, the villagers won't breed until they have food. Okay, now they should be able to breed and this thing is done. I guess while they're breeding, I'm going to collect the items for the raid farm. This is editing Mogwin. I want to speed this part up even faster, but it doesn't allow me. So allow me to do a shameless plug during the video. Yo, you there. Are you enjoying the video? Hit the subscribe button down below. What are you waiting on? Come on, go, 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 go. So we got all of the materials and now we can actually start with the raid farm. So the farm has to be built in the middle of the ocean, but luckily we have a big one right behind our base. I think this is going to be the spot. Yes, I am ready to do this.
All right, so the villager cells are made. Now we have to place five villagers inside of the raid farm. I do have some extra villagers over here. I'm going to use these guys first, and then I'm going to use the ones that are inside of the breeder. Uh, this guy has a job. I can't use villagers that have a job. I need normal villagers. Oh, this guy also has a job. Come on, bro. Ah, oh, there we go. This one does not have a job. I should have closed their shelter. I left it open and I don't want them to turn into zombies. And they probably will be fine, so I'm not going to worry about them. So all I have to do is push them inside of the water column. They will go... Huh? Uh... Oh, come on. Do I really have to restart my game? That glitch is so annoying. So as I was saying, all I have to do is get this guy on top. Just go inside of it and then push him in the water column. He will go all the way to the top. Now at the top, we've marked these spots and they basically have to fall down there. Now if I break the composer, he will fall in his cell. So you have to drop like four villagers in those spots, but I already have done three of them and you just saw the fourth one. So I'm basically done with that part. Now, I do need a fifth villager on the top, but I have no idea why he's there. So once this guy is on top, we only have to make the killing chamber and then the farm is basically done. Please do not glitch again. It glitched again. Now the farm is basically done, we need two specific things before we can actually start using the farm. One of the items that we need is a specific sword, we need a very good sword that has looting, sweeping edge, unbreaking, mending and sharpness 5. Now we can do that by combining the swords we already have. And then the second thing we need is bad omen. Alright, so we got the sword, now we need to find a outpost. When I was looking for ships, I found a outpost and I wrote down the coordinates. So now we only have to go there and actually kill a guy with a flag. You guys need to relax. Oh my god, so many of them. There you are, sir. Can I take your bad omen? Nice. I have built this farm so many times, but I've also failed this farm so many times. So I'm hoping it works. Oh, it's, it's working. It's working. Wait. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I, uh, I forgot sweeping edge. I need to put sweeping edge on my sword before I can start the farm. I got sweeping edge and now I have to get back to the outpost and get bad omen again. All right, sir. Thank you for the bad omen. Let's get back to the farm. All right. So the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing is actually working. All right. Everything looks fine. Is it working though? Is it working? Oh, yes, it is working. Oh my god, my, my ears are blown off. Oh, look at... Uh, bro, I've built this farm so many times, but yet I always get excited when I use it. The amount of stuff this thing gives you is insane. It should be illegal on servers. All right, I've used the farm for about five minutes. Let's see how much loot we got. All right, the moment of truth. Oh my... <laughs> no way bro this this is actually insane oh no 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 look at this guys look at totems of undying we get infinite totems of undying infinite emeralds oh look at this once i have access to a lot of iron i'm gonna extend the storage system and it's just gonna be insane i can officially say phase two is completed we have access to infinite amounts of emeralds and infinite amounts of totems of undying now we can start with phase three now with all of the materials we have and access to infinite amounts of emeralds, I think we can complete this phase really quickly. So the first thing I need is a mending villager. Yeah, this is uh, gonna take a while I think. My man just gave up, he does not want to turn into a librarian. Come on, I will guess I'll just have to wait. No, 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 I'm not gonna wait, I'm gonna get another villager because that guy is pissing me off. Alright, we have three villagers already, can you go back? Come, 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 come on, bro. All right, this guy is going to sell me armor. Yeah, I just realized I do already have a bunch of armor. So I don't know what the point of this guy even is. Man, I got a lot of emeralds. Let me flex a little bit. I already have a bunch of enchanted armor and a lot of them are good. But some enchantments are missing. So I'm going to use the armor that I just bought from the villagers. And then I'm going to combine all of the armors together to get the perfect armor. All right, so these two will go together. And now we have an insane helmet. These two will also go together and then we have a chest plate. 
Now, these two leggings together will also give me good leggings. Now, the only enchantment I still need for my boots are feather falling. I'm gonna try to trade them with the villagers. Oh, finally, we have mending. Let's go. I need mending on my boots and mending on my elytra. I'm gonna lock this farmer inside there too to get golden carrots. Oh, finally, we got feather falling. Okay, now we can combine all of these together to create the best boots in Minecraft. All right, our armor is fully enchanted. We also have uh, perfect enchanted tools, so we don't have to do that. Now we need netherite. Now there are a lot of different ways to get netherite. I like to use beds. Now if we want to use the bed method, we are going to need a lot of wool. I do not have a lot of wool and I'm not planning on getting a lot of sheep. Well, I do have a lot of emeralds. We can use shepherd villagers to trade emeralds into wool. The annoying thing about that is the trading cooldown. Luckily, there's a thing called vote trading. Vote trading? Uh, what? Vote trading is a way of trading in Minecraft that lets you script the trading cooldown. There are a lot of different ways to do this, but they all work the same way. Interact with a villager, travel far away from that villager, but with your trade menu still open. And when you're far away from that villager, you trade with him. Once you come back, the trade is over, but the villager does not know that you traded with him. So you can keep on doing that over and over again. I'm gonna be using ENXOS4 railway system. You got two villagers and yourself in the middle. Basically, all we do is trade with villager A while we are going to villager B. Villager A is unloaded, but the menu is still open. So once you trade with villager A, you do the same for villager B. So you keep on going from A to B, to B to A, to A to B, to B to A, to A to B. Uh, I mean, you get it. Shout out to ENXO4, you're the best guy. All right, we only need to load in the villagers. All this really is, is a railway with two villagers and you basically just go from one side to the other side while you're trading. I did mess up a little small thing beforehand, but I fixed it and now we can officially trade with these guys. Easy. I got four more emeralds left. I'm just going to trade them normally. Look at the back. Look at the amount of XP. <laughs> oh, crazy. Because we're not with them when we trade, all of the XP stays behind. And once you're done, you got a ton of it. All right, we got a ton of wool. We got a ton of wood. Let's start with the netherite grind. <laughs> we are done. Hey, first I'll turn all of this into gold. Take all that gold, mix it up with the netherite scrap and create myself five netherite ingots. And then we mix it up with the armor. Can't forget the sword. Never, never, never. And there we go. We are officially done with phase three. We have the best armor in Minecraft. Well, at least I think this is the best armor. Is there a better armor? We are now down to the last phase. In this phase, we will be creating every single farm we need in this world. The first farm I will be making is a wither skeleton farm. Wither skeleton farms will give us access to wither heads, coal, and bones. Since we have a raid farm that gives us infinite amounts of emeralds, and we will have a wither skeleton farm that provides us with a ton of wither heads we can get infinite amounts of beacons the farm i will be using does not require any spawn proofing and it's by the legend enx04 bro i already have built like three farms from ian in this world already what you don't just want to see how the farm is built but you actually want to know how it works say less every minecraft structure has a bounding box this is like the area where the structure spawns in nether fortress are also in a bounding box in this box mobs like wither skeletons and blazes only spawn here we can make our own custom platform made out of nether bricks at the maximum height of this bounding box to replicate a nether fortress. Of course, not only wither skeletons spawn here, so we use filters to get rid of the other mobs. For example, we place walls in certain ways on top of the platform to get rid of gas and magma cubes. In the corner, we place turtle eggs so piglings follow it and despawn. And then the only two mobs that basically stay are wither skeletons and blazes. In the middle of the platform, we have an iron golem that is surrounded by repeaters. This way, the golem can only be seen by the wither skeletons because of their height. The wither skeletons run towards the golem, but they go through a portal. In the overworld, they push each other into another portal, and that portal brings them to the nether roof where I will be killing them. I collected almost every item. The last thing I need to do is collect a bunch of nether bricks, and then I can start building this thing. Alright, that should be everything. I got all of the items I need to build this farm. The fortress I have right next to my spawn is actually perfect for this farm, so I won't need to look for another one. Alright, let's start with it.
Okay, so the spawning area is done. Now I have to go on top of the nether roof to create the killing chamber. All right, this should be the block and yeah, nice. This is basically done. I'm also going to create a portal at my base that connects to the nether roof so I can easily travel everywhere. All I have to do now is create the overworld bridge and then the farm should be done. All right, we are done. Let's test this farm out. I hope it works. Oh yeah, there we go. It's working. Let's do a small AFK session to get some skulls. Alright, I'm back. This is the portal that brings me to the nether roof. As you can see, I did a small AFK session. I got about a shulker box filled with bones and coal. But like most importantly, we got 25 Wither Skulls. 25 Wither Skulls will basically give us 8 beacons. I'm gonna kill the Withers under the end portal because why should I make it harder for myself? Uh huh. Now at the moment, the main reasons why I need beacons is to clean out the spawn area. If you didn't know, the spawn area in the vault is actually always loaded. For example, if you create an iron spawn inside of the world spawn, the iron farm will always produce iron, even if you're not close to the world spawn. So all the farms that require you to go AFK near it will be built in world spawn. If we have a bunch of beacons, we can use H2 and FNC5 pickaxes to mine everything instantly. So that's exactly what I will be doing. I've also been making a bunch of glass because I need it for a bunch of farms. But yeah, most importantly, we got ourselves 8 beacons. To power those beacons, I'm gonna use our raid farm to get a bunch of emeralds. So, I'll see you after I AFK for a little bit. Alright, we're back and we should have a bunch of emeralds. Yeah, we definitely have a- oh my god, yeah. We still have to fix the item sorter, but we'll do that later. Besides all of the item drops, this farm also gives you a ton of XP. If you go AFK overnight, I think you will get about 600 levels of XP. But anyways, I'm gonna head to the vault spawn and clear a corner out so I can start making some awesome farms. Alright, I'm back. As you can see, I've been AFKing for some time. So for the past few days, I've been clearing out a big chunk at the vault spawn. I took my time with this because it was really, really boring. But yeah, as you can see, we got a corner all cleared up and I also built a villager breeder. Now, there's a big reason why I have a villager breeder at vault spawn. That's because I need a bunch of them. I'm gonna be making an iron farm and iron farms require a bunch of villagers. Iron farms pretty simple. When a villager is in a village, iron golems can spawn. Now villages are defined by beds, so if you have a bed with a villager in the middle of nowhere, well that's technically a village. Now when villagers are panicking, iron golems tend to spawn in to protect those villagers. We can take advantage of this mechanic. We can basically make multiple villages holding different villagers around an area. And between those villagers, we can have a zombie jumping up and down by using water and soul sand. Whenever the zombie goes up, villagers start to panic and golems can spawn in. If we make a couple of these villages and zombie jumpers around each other, we can have an insane iron golem maker. And of course, when the golems spawn in, they fall in a pit and they burn to death. And then we can have our iron. This farm was made by Day6, go check them out on YouTube. Anyways, let's start with the main build. Luckily, we have Light Metica to make our life easier.
Alright, so the main build of the farm is done. Now we have to get the zombies and the villagers inside of the farm. For those of you that are wondering, what am I seeing on your screen? I use a mod where I can see the spawn chunks. So those big squares right over there are just the spawn chunks. But yeah, let's get some name tags for the zombies. And yeah, uh, you see the name tag? You see it? I've also changed my shepherds into clerics because these bottles right over here can save me when I need them. But yeah, most of the time I only use them on my elite trap. So if you see them in my inventory, it's only for my elite trap. Getting zombies in there should be easy. I'm gonna use trapdoors so I can trap them inside of here because mobs think that trapdoors are normal blocks. Oh my god, no, 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 please. What is going on? Just go inside of it. Oh, okay, there we go. So the first one is fixed. For some reason, they come with like a hundred zombies. Like, relax, bro. Relax. All right, your turn. Yeah. Oh, we got more than one. Uh, I don't think that's a problem. All right, now we have to put the villagers inside of it. Uh, but this setup right over here is kind of wrong. I have no idea how to fix this. <laughs> bro, bro, bro. Luckily, I got one villager out of it. I, I messed this thing up. Oh my god, come on. How am I... Oh no! I got out of it. Uh, there might be some villagers that died, but uh, let's not talk about this. Okay, so we got the first guy down over here. Uh, getting him in is harder than I thought. Like, come on, go in... Oh, finally, he's in. We're gonna have to do that like two more times in that cell, and then we have to do it seven more times in the other cells. When that's done, the farm should be working. Alright, that should be it. The farm should be wor- Oh, you can hear it already. It's working. Allegedly, this farm makes you 70 stacks of iron ingots an hour, but uh, I, I don't know about that. Now, we can go far away as we want. This farm will still be working because it's in the spawn chunks. So, the iron farm is completed. Now, we can go to the next farm on our list. It's pretty late right now. I'm going to sleep, but before I go to sleep, I'm going to do an overnight AFK session at the raid farm. I want to get to level 1000 before I end this episode. All right, I have afk overnight. I've extended the storage system before I afk so we should have a lot of stuff. Right, let's check this out. Oh my... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, this... Uh, yeah, uh, well, what can I say? The farm works. One thing that definitely is a scan is this iron farm. Allegedly, it produced 70 stacks per hour, but as you can see, uh, there is no 70 stacks per hour in here. Well, I'm not gonna complain, that's like a lot of iron, uh, but yeah, uh, 70 iron? No, 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 no. I'm gonna clean up this area right over here, and then I'm gonna be creating a shulker farm. Now, a shulker farm is actually really easy to make. The hardest thing is getting the shulker to the overworld. The shulker farm I will be building is by Enix04. This is like the fourth farm of Enix04, but yeah, Enix04, I love you. Shulker farms come in every shape and size, but their mechanics are all the same. Shulkers can hit themselves with their projectiles. Well, of course, they do that by accident. When a shulker hits itself, it can duplicate itself. So the way this farm works is by placing a bunch of portals and glass walls next to each other. In the middle of the farm, we lock a shulker with a bunch of snowmen. The shulker will try to hit the snowman, but it will hit itself. The shulker will duplicate, but the places where it can duplicate to will send it through a portal. On another side, we have a system where the shulker will teleport to a block, but it will get stuck in a boat under another block. The shulker will die by suffocation and it will drop shulkers. In the nether side, we also have a shulker bank, so when the shulker in the overworld dies, we can get the new one back very easily. This farm is built by Ian X04, and again, shout out to Ian X04, he's the best Minecraft YouTuber. Anyways, I'm gonna start making this thing, I hope it goes smoothly. And by the fact we're gonna be working with shulkers, I know this thing will not go smoothly.
All right, all right. The farm is working, my friends. As you can hear, the shulker is getting hit and it's basically duplicating itself. What the hell? No. No. Oh, what? Oh. No, 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 no. I think my farm is gonna break. No. Oh, no. The shulker got out. Are you serious? Oh, Oh my god. Yeah, sometimes I uh, hate Minecraft, to be honest. All over again. All over again, my friends. Oh my god. Okay, I got it fixed. Uh, I have to be careful now. I do not want this thing to blow up again. Okay, it's working. As you can see behind me, the shulker farm is done. Uh, th that was not fun. To be honest, that was not fun. The, the amount of times I had to get shulkers was insane. The next farm I'm going to be making is pretty simple. The farm after this farm requires a bunch of string. So the most logical thing I can do is turn a spider spawner into a string farm. This mineshaft right over here is literally underneath my spawn. As you can see, it has a zombie spawner and a spider spawner next to each other. Now, to be honest, I'm only interested in the spider spawner, so I will ignore the zombie spawner. All right, I'm going to turn this into a spider spawner. Three, two, one. There we go. The farm is done. We have a spider farm. Uh, yeah, yeah, the spiders can hit me sometimes, but I have to fix that real quick. I'm going to make this place look a little bit nicer, and then I'm going to AFK so I can get some strings. All right, the spider farm was not that interesting, but the next one is. I'm going to be creating a bee farm that's going to give me a bunch of honey. Now, the honey blocks are actually needed in a lot of machines I want to do after this farm, so that's why I need to make it right now. Throughout this episode, I've gathered a bunch of beehives. For the honey farm, I'm gonna need a bunch of beehives filled with a bunch of bee. In total, about 64 beehives. Breeding bees is actually really easy. All you have to do is lock a bunch of bees up and then just breed them constantly. While you're breeding them, you should make more beehives and eventually you will have a bunch of them. So that's the first thing I will be doing. Alright, I might have gone overkill with the amount of bees I created, but uh, you can never have more than enough bees. All of these shulker boxes are filled with beehives and in every beehive we have 3 bees. I'm gonna need a stack of beehives for the farm I'm gonna be creating. Just like every other farm in this world, the beehive is by enx 4 So, the bee farm is actually pretty easy. All it is is a big loop. We have droppers, dispensers, hoppers and beehives. The droppers throw the bottles, the dispensers try to use the bottles on the beehives. If it has honey, it takes the honey. If not, it passes the bottle to the next one. The honey bottles also get passed to the next one. Eventually, at one hopper, there will be an item sorter that takes out the honey bottle out of the system. This farm is easy and compact. Shout out to Enix04. You're the best guy. Alright, the bee farm is done. These top chests have to be filled with glass bottles. Now I did place a couple of them in and the farm is actually working, but we have to stack this thing up with a bunch of bottles. Now you can craft bottles, but I have a better idea. The raid farm we have actually produces bottles. Now we have an item sorter at the top, so if we change the input to bottles, we can catch a lot of bottles. So if I clear out all of these chests and then go AFK at the raid farm, when I come back, I should have many, many stacks of bottles. All right, I have afk for a couple of hours. Now let's check how many bottles we got. All chests should be full, to be honest. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. We have more than enough of bottles. Now, the good thing is we never need to get more bottles because the system is a loop. When we use the bottles, we can just put it back into the system. So the honey farm is basically done. We have a bunch of bottles for the system. All of the bottles will stay inside of the system and we don't need to get any more bottles. The next farm we'll be making is a slime farm. I'm gonna be making a slime farm that does not require you to clear out any chunks. The farm is designed by more things and it's really, really easy to make. Slimes spawn in two ways. One way is in swamps. 
Slimes naturally spawn in swamps at night time. The second way slimes spawn are in slime chunks. In your world you have a bunch of slime chunks. In these chunks slime can spawn. When you use slime chunks you usually have to dig out a big area. I'm gonna be relying on swamps. All this farm really is is a big room with an iron golem in the middle. Slimes spawn in this room because of the swamp and they will go towards the iron golem. They get dropped in a hole that is made out of magma blocks. Eventually they burn and die. All the player has to do is afk on the top. Shout out to more things for this amazing farm. I'm gonna make the slime farm afk a little bit and then I'll bring you guys back when I'm done. Alright, I had a 15 minute AFK session, let's see how much stuff we got. Now I do know the rates of this farm, so we should, yeah, we should have a lot. There we go. In 15 minutes, we got three stacks of slime box. This farm is done. The slime farm is completed. And I, I think that's more than enough slime for this episode. The next farm on the list is a sugarcane farm. The design is by Sleeping Prince and it's super easy to create. The sugarcane farm is nothing more than a big long field of sugarcane. On one side, we have a storage system that is under a flying machine. Every time a redstone timer goes off, the flying machine goes from one side to the other. On top of the flying machine, we have minecarts with hoppers. These collect the sugarcane that gets destroyed by the flying machine. Once the flying machine arrives at the other side, it gets pushed back. Eventually, it will dock back to the storage system, drop off all of the sugarcane, and wait for the timer to go off again. Very simple and clean design. Again, shout out to Sleeping Prince. So let's get this thing going. Until now, every single wood I needed for every farm, I gathered with my hands, and uh, I have to get that changed. The next farm I will be making is a tree farm. There are a lot of different tree farms, but I'm gonna be making a very simple one. Can you guess who designed it? My friend, if you said ENX04, you are right. The tree farm is very simple. We have the player station. Here we spam bone meal and saplings on a piece of dirt. The player gets fed bone meal by a dispenser. On top of the tree we have a TNT duper. Once the tree explodes, all of the drops goes down under the farm and gets back up through a water stream. The player is on top of this tree. Because of this we can collect the saplings. The rest of the items go inside of the chest. And that's it. This farm is very simple. Shout out to enx 4 I'm gonna make this farm and then I'm gonna upgrade the wither skeleton farm storage system because I need a lot of bones. After that I first have to afk at the wither skeleton farm to get a lot of bone meal and then I will afk at the tree farm. This tree farm is insane. We did a 15 minute AFK session. Let's take a look at the amount of wood we have. Oh, we have a lot of wood. Now, the downside to tree farms are the uses of the bone meal. We need a bunch of bone meal. The sugarcane farm also is working. As you can see, we got a bunch of sugarcane. And the honey farm also is producing a bunch of honey. As you can see, I already made a ton of honey blocks. I've also been turning all of my ingots into blocks. And as you can see, we have a bunch of iron. And of course, the shulker farm is also working. We have a bunch of shulker shells. Now, we are almost ready. We are down to our last two farms. The next farm that I will be making is a gold farm. The farm that I will be building is not hard to make, but it is annoying because we are going to be using magma blocks. 
But the good thing about this farm is that it's going to produce us so much gold. With the amount of gold we're going to get, we can't use normal chests. We're going to have to use shulker loaders. The gold farm is not that hard. We have platforms made out of magma. On those platforms, only zombified piglings can spawn. In the middle, we have a tower that is made out of trapdoors and turtle eggs. The zombified piglings will try to go there, but they will go through a portal. In the overworld, there is a bridge that takes them back to the nether. Over in the nether, they will be instantly placed in boats. Because of this, new piglings will instantly spawn in. Using the boat method, a ton of piglings will spawn in every second. The farm was made by Dashpum4. You're a legend, my friend. This farm is insane. I've used it for 20 minutes and my ears hurt. Let's take... Oh my god. We... Two shulker boxes already filled. Oh! Uh, okay, so I think the shulker box thingy is broken, but... Bro, look at the amount. Huh? Alright, the shulker roller is probably broken because in the first chest we should have normal ingots. Yeah, I, I can't figure it out. In this chest, normal ingots should be in there, but... Uh... Yeah, whatever. I have no idea how to fix this thing. I'll have to hop in a creative world later on to try to understand this farm. But for now, it should be okay. I think the ingots go in the last chest right over here. I, I figured it out. The ingots were going into the last chest while they're supposed to go in the first chest. I was probably not focused when I was watching the tutorial, but that's okay. Bro, I made like at least 8 stacks of gold blocks in 20 minutes. That's insane. At the moment, I'm collecting every single color in Minecraft. That's because I'm going to be making every single color of concrete. The last form on my list is a concrete slash sand duper. This is not your normal concrete slash sand duper. This is a two in one farm. This is a very complex farm, but all you need to know is that at the end of this farm, we will have every single type of concrete, every single type of concrete powder, and every type of sand. Well, there are only two types of sand, but you know what I mean. The last farm is the most complex one. In the overworld, we have a gravity duper. Basically, it takes items and throws it in the end, but in the overworld, that item still exists. So it basically dupes blocks. We can dupe everything from sand to concrete. In the end, we have a concrete maker. We can turn on a lever that will take all of the concrete powder and turn it into concrete. This is by a complex machine that makes concrete fly up a water stream and destroy it by TNT. Bro, this thing is too complex to explain. We can also leave the lever off and I will just collect the items that get duped. The duper is set up that we can dupe every single color of concrete and sand. All of the items fall down a hole and go through a water stream inside of a large auto sorter. And yeah, that was the gravity duper slash concrete maker. The duper is designed by Scorpio, the converter is designed by Mont and the sorter by myself. Shout out to all of them. As soon as this cactus is melted, we should have every single color in the game. Alright, that's it. Now we have to turn all of these colors into to concrete red sand let me take you and in this chest we have every single type of concrete and every type of sand and now we can go ahead and start making this farm bro i'm so happy i don't want to make any more farms in this world but let's not lie to each other we probably know i'm gonna be making some more farms later on
vast world of Minecraft, we stumble upon the average player and their usual activities. However, there's something not quite right about this scene. It seems this player has a habit of exploding innocent villagers, locking them up in tiny boxes and forcing them to work. All of a sudden, the player stops and says, Whoa, wait a minute, this just ain't fair. Turns out keeping villagers trapped and making them work all day doesn't feel right to them. Who would have thought? In a total aha moment, this player decided to turn their life around to want to create a better future for these poor villagers. So he got to work building not just one, but two epic empires for these villagers. Well, that's the story of me. And guess what? It can be your story. Free the villagers. So at the moment, I have a hardcore world where I have everything what I want to do whatever I want. Now, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to save villagers. Uh, let's not talk about the villagers that are behind me right now. Now, right before I started to record, I went ahead and AFK'd at the Wither Skeleton Farm. As you can see, we got a bunch of bones, coal, and Wither Skulls. So before I want to do anything else in this video, the first thing I'm going to get is a bunch of beacons. Now we have access to everything besides getting the Wither Star itself. That requires me to kill the Wither and to get, of course, some obsidian. Now we can do a little cheating and kill the Wither underneath the end portal for free, basically. It can attack me. Easy. I'm gonna get myself a couple of stars just to be sure that I don't have to come back over here. Alright, I got myself 21 nether stars and I think that's enough for now. I honestly have no idea if I have enough obsidian back home, so I'm gonna take some with me just to be sure. 21 beacons in my pocket. Alright, now I got my beacon situation in order. I also have a shulker full of emeralds. Let me start to explain what's going to happen. Now for that, I will send you to my movie theater. Welcome, welcome. This video is going to be split in two parts. Each part will take us back in time. We're going to be building two epic empires in two different eras. The first empire is going to be during the Middle Ages, and you already guessed it, we are going to be building a beautiful town surrounded by castle walls. This town will come alive with specific villagers, each playing a vital role. Now picture windmills and wheat fields on the outskirts of the land where farmers are living and working. So there we go, the first villagers in this town are the farmers. Besides farmers, we will be having tool, weapon and armor smiths living in the heart of the town. Besides the homes where they live in, we will have numerous amounts of factories around the town for them to work in. We will also have butchers, leather workers and shepherds in the town, but like come on, who even trades with these guys? Anyways, they all deserve their freedom, I guess. Every one of these three will have their own special building where they can carry out their task besides their home. I also want to add a small harbor to the town, so I guess I will make some fishermen stations over there. So fishermen are also welcome to the town. Now as for location, I've already went ahead and found a plains biome with a village. This village will be useful. I'm going to be stealing villagers and making a breeder in my future town. Hopefully by the end of the build we'll have a bunch of villagers so we can spread them out over the town. And there we go, that will be the first empire. Now as for the second empire, well, uh, I'll see you guys later. Alright, so before I go to the land where I will be building the first empire, I'm gonna gather some concrete. I'm gonna be using concrete to mark out the layout of the town. After marking where I want everything to be, I will terraform the land before I actually start building. Alright, that should be enough, I got 3 shulker boxes filled with concrete. If you fly in this direction, we will see the portal I've set up to go to the future town. There we go. May I present you the land where we will be building the first empire. Now the land over here actually is pretty good, but we're gonna have to terraform some of it. I'm gonna start off by making a villager breeder so we can have a lot of villagers when this build is done. Well, I should have brought stuff with me to build the farm. Uh. Now, if you've watched my first hardcore video, you've seen how I built this thing twice. All this farm really is, is a farm with crops and we got beds where villagers try to get through the bed, but they can't. They fall in a hole and we get a baby villager out of it. Pretty simple, but it's a great farm. I'm gonna be setting this thing up on top of the hill. Alright, so the crop farm is built. Now we'll also have to add some walls. Let's set up the trap doors over here. On the opposite side, we place the beds. Then we'll get two villagers inside of the farm. Okay, my friends, you're the first one to go. Oh, oh he didn't die. Whatever. Alright, second one. Can you go too? Go, go, go. Alright, once these two are in, the farm is basically done. All we have to do now is create the collection system. 
The collecting system is just the hole where the baby villagers fall into it. And eventually we can set up a rail space system to collect the villagers out of the farm. Alright, the villager breeder is finished. The next thing I'm going to be doing is build a bunch of beacons around the town. This will be very useful when we are going to be terraforming this place. I'm going to place all of the beacons down, plant the city and then I'll meet you guys when I'm done. My friends, my friends, I've done a magnificent job terraforming and planning this city. Terraforming this place took a little bit longer than I expected, but take a look at this, I really like how it's done. Also, take a look at this villager breeder, this thing is filled up. Now that everything is planned, we can actually start and building the city itself. But wait, we don't have any materials for this town. Well, don't you worry, I have a bunch of resources to get anything I want. Now, honestly, for the first build, I don't need anything special. We're mainly gonna need a bunch of stony blocks and a lot of wood. Now, for the stony blocks, we need stone, stone bricks, cobblestone, diorite, andesite, granite, and bricks. Now, we can already cross off stone, stone bricks, and cobblestone because we have a bunch of it from when we were terraforming the spawn. Okay, actually, I take my words back. I don't have a bunch of stone left. I do have stone, but I have to turn it into stone bricks, so I'm gonna need more stone. Now, the best way to get stony blocks is by just mining them. So, that's what I will be doing. So, as I said before, we already have cobblestone and stone bricks. These are set up now at the town. Let's get the other blocks. Okay, I just realized I might also need deep slate. I'm gonna use cobbled and deep slate tiles, but I think you only need cobbled deep slate and you can create tiles from cobbled deep slate. So getting cobbled deep slate, it is. Alright, I'm gonna set up a beacon and mine a bunch of stone. Alright, beacon activated, let's get a bunch of stone.
Oh my god, move out of the way, I'm trying to say something. Well, he ruined it. Okay, as you can see behind me, we have a bunch of stone. We got a bunch of cobblestone, stone, granite, diorite, gravel. We got everything as you can see. We even got like a bunch of ores. Look at the amount of diamonds we've got. But like, we've got a ton of stuff. We do not have to get any more stony blocks for this video. I digged out this entire area for cobble deep slates. And this entire room on the top was also digged out for stone, granite, diorite, and you know, all of the other stony blocks. So with that out of the way, we almost have all of the stony blocks. Let me take all of these back to the town. Alright, almost all of the stony blocks are set up. Now the last stony block we need are bricks. Now there are different ways to get bricks. Now you can get it from clay, but when you get bricks from clay, you first have to look for clay. Then you have to cook the clay and that takes a long time. Now luckily you can also trade bricks. Luckily I have infinite amounts of emeralds, so trading is easy. Well besides the trading cooldown. But we can get rid of the trading cooldown by setting up a vote trading area like we did last time. By using vote trading, we can basically skip the trading cooldown and we can trade as much as we want. So we can trade infinite amounts of bricks, although it takes some time. Alright, this thing is set up. Let's get some emeralds and let the trading start. Oh, I think this is going to be fast. Let's see. Oh, you can trade like three stacks at one time. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, I'll be done in no time. The best part of vote trading is collecting all of the XP when you're done trading. So the bricks are collected, now we can go ahead and get the next material we need. Besides the stony blocks, we need a bunch of wood. I'm gonna be using three variants of wood. Birch, spruce and dark oak. Now the birch and spruce are really easy to get since I have a tree farm. We just have to AFK for a very long time and we will get stacks and stacks of it. Now unfortunately we cannot use the tree farm for dark oak but that's not a problem we don't need a lot of it so we'll just mine it manually. This thing has so much bone meal it should be enough to get a bunch of birch and spruce if not I still have a ton of bones at the wither skeleton farm. Please still be working please. Yes that looks perfectly okay I'm gonna be AFKing here get some spruce wood get some birch wood and then I'll get a bunch of dark oak wood and uh, then I'll bring you guys back. Alright, alright, I got every single type of wood I need. I mined a bunch of dark oak as you can see. I also have a bunch of spruce and birch from the tree farm. I brought over 4 shulker boxes of birch and spruce but I got a lot of left in the tree farm. Also got myself some lanterns to use as a light source and some glass. For the factories I'm also gonna use lava so that's the only thing I still need to get. Never mind, I also need some campfires. Okay, now I should have everything I need to start the main buildings. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and build all of this and uh, then I'll bring you guys back when I'm done.
this place is not even done yet but it's already looking insane there's a lot of stuff we still need to do but for now i already love it the size of this place is actually really really big take a look at this the next step in finishing this build is adding roads to this place the main road will be made out of stone and gravel, but the sides of the road will be made out of coarse dirt, rooted dirt and dirt paths. Now, the coarse dirt can be simply crafted and dirt path is basically just dirt with a shovel. Now, the root dirt is kind of tricky. Now, there are two ways of getting rooted dirt. First is trading it from a wandering villager, but the thing is, wandering villagers take a while to spawn in and they don't guarantee you to trade rooted dirt. Now another way of getting rooted dirt is by getting it underneath azalea trees. Now from past experiences, I think you can get about 8 stacks from each azalea tree. Sometimes you can get even more. But honestly, I do not need a lot of it since I'm gonna be using it only for the sides of the road and it's gonna be mixed with coarse and dirt pads. So getting coarse dirt should not be a problem since we have a ton of gravel from when we mined the entire thing underneath our base and also we have a bunch of dirt from when we uh, terraformed the spawn. Alright so we made it all the way down let's see how much rooted dirt we got and we got more than 7 stacks let's see. Oh we got a half of a shulker box that's actually great. We're gonna need to do that like 3 more times and then we have enough of rooted dirt to finish this build. And guess what? There's another azalea tree right in front of me. Nice. As soon as I have enough of rooted dirt, I'm gonna go ahead and make the roads. I guess I'll see you guys when I'm done. We are making so much progress. Just the roads alone make this place look 10 times better. I must say this place looks a little bit naked but as soon as we add details it's going to look insane. Talking about details I first need to get the villagers inside of their workstations. Now here's the thing this place is actually bigger than I thought it was going to be. So the villagers inside of that breeder are not enough. I'm going to create two more extra breeders just to get more villagers. Now while we're waiting on new villagers to breed we are gonna decorate our place right now i'm gonna gather all of their workstations and then make a bunch of beds to place inside of their homes making all of their workstation is easy i got all of the materials the only thing i don't have is wool for their beds i'm gonna need a lot of beds remember when i said who even trades with shepherds well i need shepherds i'm gonna set up some shepherds at the void trading station to be able to trade wool I know some of you might say isn't that lazy you can create a wool farm bro I am done with farms after episode 1. If you haven't watched my first episode I would highly recommend you to go watch it it was amazing. Uh, well uh, besides building all of the farms. The second breeder is almost done the only thing I have to do is get some villagers inside of it. For those of you wondering why I have light blue beds, well when I set it up two shepherds in the Vote trading center, one of those gave me black wool and light blue beds as a trading option, so I traded some beds with him. I've also traded a bunch of black wool to be able to create a bunch of beds for this town. Alright, the bridge is done, let me get the rails over here and uh, then I can bring over the villagers. Almost done with this. Alright, the two villagers should arrive any second now. Hello, where are you guys? hello oh there they are there we go they're already breathing nice all right on the opposite side of that one i'm gonna create a third one and then i'm gonna start placing all of the beds inside the village all right so the villager breeders are all built now i'm gonna fill every house with a bunch of beds we got a bunch of wool we got a bunch of wood we can do this very easily i just finished placing all of the beds and now i'm designing some lanterns that i want to spread around the city now i'm not very good at this so designing one is kind of difficult for me yeah, honestly, I have uh, no ID. Uh, I think I like this one. Uh, I'm gonna go for this one. Alright, I'm gonna spam these around and make sure mobs cannot spawn.
With the use of lanterns, moss carpets and glowstone we've mob proofed this entire town. Not only that, I've also placed all of the work stations for every villager uh, around their area where they need to work. So as I said, I used glowstone and moss carpet around the areas where I didn't place any roads just to make sure the mobs cannot spawn. And yeah, all of the houses have beds, but y'all already have seen that. The archery is one of my favorite areas. Take a look at this. The stable... well yeah, it's just a stable. Uh, nothing special about this. The large factory right over here will be for the armor smiths and look at this place, I love it. For the windmills I just placed a bunch of barrels around the windmill and inside of the windmill for the farmers. The big barn is for the shepherds and I just placed some hay bales and the working stations. For all of the chests I had over here I just placed them down over here in this hole with the portal. Nothing too special. With everything set up, we can start with placing all of the villagers at their working stations. Doing that is pretty easy, all we have to do is create railways from the breeder to the working stations. The armor smiths are in place, so are the farmers on this side. The shepherds and the farmers on the other side are also in place. Oh my god, watch them all go back to their job at daytime. So we now have to do that for the other villagers. I also forgot to tell you guys about the Fletchers. We have Fletchers in this city. I think I never mentioned it before, but y'all saw the archery. So the toolsmiths are also in their place. So are the butchers. The weapon smiths have also arrived at their location. And lastly, the Fletchers. I need to wait to get some more villagers so I can get leather workers and fishermen when I make the harbor. Alright, so the first empire is almost done. All we have to do now is create a harbor, decorate this place with a bunch of trees, create some wheat fields, and then we are done. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we are finished with the first empire. Alright, after multiple days, I can finally say the first empire is completed. Enjoy it!
right, we are starting with the next empire. Let me take you guys again to the theater and explain what we're going to be doing. The next empire will be the Roman slash Greek empire. Honestly, I have no idea what the difference is between these two building styles. Now we've used some villagers, but there are a lot of them left. I want to have a main temple that has a view over the entire empire. This temple won't have any villagers, it's just mainly for decoration. Next up, I want to create a colosseum with a building. Inside of that building, we will have clerics. I want to give it a dungeon vibe, or at least I'll try. I also want a large library for the librarians, and then we'll have a bunch of small and large houses scattered everywhere. The location for this empire will be in a desert. Again, I've already scouted and found a perfect desert. I think you should know the drill by now. Get concrete, plan the city out, and then we'll terraform everything. What is this guy doing on top of the nether roof all by himself? How did he get over here? Oh, I have to set up the villager breeder first. I forgot about that. Alright, so the first breeder is almost done. Let me give these guys some bread. If I bring this guy to the breeder, the second breeder is also done. And there we go, the second breeder is also finished. Alright, so we got two villagers up, now we can start plan the city and terraform everything. Well, well, take a look at this place. So we got the main city right over here, and then we have a bridge going to the temple. Since everything is made out of sand, terraforming this place was actually pretty easy. Well, that was the easy part. Now we have to start making the village. But wait, we don't have any materials. Well, actually, we almost have everything. Now this village is gonna use sandstone. Well, sandstone is made out of sand. We have a sand duper, so we can get a bunch of sand. The next item we will use a lot in this village is red sand. And again, we can get red sand from the sand duper. For some builds, we're gonna need concrete. Guess what? We have a concrete maker, so we also have concrete. Well, I also need diorite. Guess what? I got a bunch of diorite. The only item I need to put work in is quartz. But guess what? We have a voiding trading system. And we can trade quartz for emeralds. So basically, we have infinite amounts of quartz. I just traded enough quartz to build this entire empire twice. So quartz, no problem anymore. For some reason, I took all of the diorite I mined in the mines and I brought it to the medieval village, but I didn't even use it. So uh, I can take all of this back to the Greek village. I keep calling everything villages, but they're supposed to be empires, okay? For concrete, I'm gonna need white, uh, blue, and red concrete. But I have afk at the concrete maker, so we have a bunch of concrete. We got the concrete, we got the sand, we got the quartz. We need one more thing. The last thing we need is gold. 
Now a lot of temples are decorated with gold. Now guess what? I have an insane gold farm. So why not use a bunch of this gold to decorate the city? Uh, again, it's not a city. It's an empire. I'm going to AFK for an hour and then I'll bring you guys back when I'm done. The hour is finished. Let's check the loot. Yes, yes, yes. We have a bunch of gold. I'm going to turn it all into blocks and then we'll see how much we got. 11 stacks of gold blocks. Man, that's insane. Uh, that's more than enough. Earlier, I said I had enough sand, but I, I don't have enough. So I'm going to dupe some more sand and a red sand. And then we can start building this thing. Because we've changed all of the concrete powder into sand and red sand, we are making a bunch of sand. Look at all of the sand that is wasted. My collection system is literally too small to collect all of it. Uh... I guess we'll let it all burn. All right, now I actually have enough sand. I'm gonna turn all of these into sandstone and take them back to the Greek Empire. I also need some smooth sandstone, so I'll steal this setup over here. As soon as some of this sandstone is melted, we can start building this thing. Again, I'll see you guys when I'm done. Don't mind me sitting on my throne. The main buildings of the empire are finished and this place looks amazing. Just wait until you see this with shaders on. The time lapse is beautiful. This building right over here is a library and it's beautiful. Just take a look at this. Wow. This is nice. The streets look kind of dead right now, but I promise when I detail this place, it's going to look better. This is the building opposite of the Colosseum, and this is where the clerics are. I did say I was going to do a dungeon type build, but uh, yeah, I didn't. I like it. It's pretty simple, but it's, it's looking good. As you can see, I'm using cauldrons and in some places barrels as decoration. Because of that, before villagers enter this place, we have to turn them into clerics or else they will turn into 
leather workers and we don't want that to happen the big buildings right over here will be for the masons and the cartographers will have the small houses all right the next thing i want to do is get the place mob proof this small farm i have right over here produces enough carpets for me to cover all of the glowstone i use in my builds I'm gonna start by making everything mob proof and then I'm gonna make the roads for this village. Once the roads and everything is mob proof, we can start letting the villagers out and then we can start detailing this place. I guess I'll do that and then I'll see you guys back. All right, all right, I am back on my throne. A lot of things have happened since last time. I've built a very simple wall out of sand and sandstone. I have built, as you can see, roads. I've also covered the sand inside of the walls with dirt, coarse dirt and some moss. I've created all of the workstations around the city. And yeah, what can I say? This place is looking fancy. Now, remember when I said this place is mob proof? Well, it's not. As you can see, on top of the roofs, some places mobs can spawn. We can fix that really easy. We can fix that easy by using lighting or lightning or, you know, those glowing vines. Now, there are two things left inside of this village. First, we'll have to put all of the villagers in their spots. Secondly, we'll have to finish the decoration. Some spots of the empire kind of look empty, so I'm going to add some more smaller houses. And then I'm also going to create some markers for the decoration. And I'm going to create some wells around the empire just to finish it off. Doing all of that is kind of boring. So I'm just going to make a large time lapse of everything I do. And then when I'm done, I'll bring you guys back.
Well, I'm happy to announce that I'm officially done with the second empire. As a final message, I just had to turn on shaders because this place looks insane with the shaders on. I am really happy with the detailing. As you can see, I made a lot of markets and wells around the empire. Small details like this just make any build look 10 times better. The empire is now 100% mob proof. Mobs cannot spawn, not even on the roofs because I've put lightning or a lichen or whatever it's called on every spot where mobs can spawn. Can we just take a second to admire this library? Look at this. Now there's two small things I have to do before I'm done with this place. First is get rid of the beacons and then lastly clear out all of the chests. For all of the shulkers and chests I'm just gonna put them all down over here right next to the portal. If you made it this far into the video I want to thank you so much for supporting me. Honestly it means a lot to me. Before I'll show you guys the final time lapse, I want to ask you to hit that subscribe button down below if you're not already subscribed. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye! This right over here is my world spawn. As you can see, it's pretty basic. Well, to be honest, it's far from basic. If I take a dive in this normal looking river, I get introduced to an entire new world underground. Well, to be honest, the underwater cave was pretty boring, so I decided to transform it into a beautiful underwater world. This place has many houses for players to live in, ocean ruins to discover, beautiful looking reefs, and of course, many, many different animals that habit the cave. I've been on a long break from Minecraft Hardcore and it feels good to be back. Before we start with anything, I'm gonna have to get rid of a problem. This villager breeder has been making so many villagers that it's actually causing my game to lag, so I'm gonna have to get rid of him. Alright, with that problem fixed, we can actually start with the video. Okay, I just realized that the villagers might not be the lag problem. I think this machine is overrun. Let's take a look. Ah, yeah, it's 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 overrun. No, 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 no. I got to a point where I have so much materials, it's insane. Oh my god, the iron farm is completely overrun. Alright, I'm gonna turn all of these ingots into blocks and get rid of the poppies because this machine is gonna cause the game to crash. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do with the cave. All I know is I want to turn it into a beautiful water world type of thing. The problem we have at the moment in the cave is of course it's dark and we cannot breathe underwater. Now luckily we can actually fix that problem by using a conduit. I have never built a conduit before but I do know what I need. The first item we need for the conduit is a heart of sea which we got three of them. Now getting these guys is actually the easy part. With one heart of sea you can make one conduit and I don't know how many I need. The second item we need to build conduits are nautilus shells. There are many different ways to get shells, you can get them by killing drowned zombies that are holding them. Wandering villagers can also have them as a trade but it's really rare. And you can also fish them but it's really really rare. Now for Heart of Seas I think you can only get them from treasure maps. And finding treasure chests is really easy. All we do is fly over a sea, find ourselves some ships and then you can find a treasure chest easily. And there we go, we got ourselves an extra Heart of Sea. So I've been flying around for about 5 minutes now and I haven't seen any drowned zombie yet. I swear Minecraft does this on purpose, when I don't need them they're all around and when I actually need them I can't find a single one. I'm gonna craft night vision potions to be able to see better underwater. Alright we got plenty of potions, underwater vision should not be a problem anymore. 
Why are there no drones? What is this? All right, I'm actually starting to get pissed off. Where are the drowned zombies? Is my game glitched? I think my game is actually glitched. Ah, the first drowned zombies are inside. They're actually in the cave that I'm going to transform. And these guys are not holding any shells. So, uh, yeah, no shell, I guess. Now, I actually do not know if these shells are actually really rare. I don't think so if you can actually trade them from a wandering villager. But, yeah, uh, we'll see. I'm gonna give the ocean another shot, but as you can see, there, there's still no drowned zombie. Come on, where are the drowned zombies? Okay, I'm actually giving up on zombies. I'm just gonna get them from fishing. We should be able to get a really good... Oh, there we go. A really good fishing rod, and then we can use this to try to get as many shells as we need. I'm gonna go ahead and find myself a cozy spot to start fishing, I guess. To be honest, I have no idea what the rates are of getting shells from fishing. Uh, I hope it's actually decent because I'm not gonna stay here for the entire day. One Google search later and I uh, I figured out it's basically impossible to get all of the shells from uh, fishing. Well, like it's possible, but it's it's way too slow. Oh, the first. Uh, well, yeah, I was gonna say that the first drowned in the ocean, but this guy is not holding a, a shell, so uh, it doesn't matter. Got a couple of them over here. Oh, he is holding a shell. Let's go. We got our first shell. We got like uh, 20 more to go or uh, I, I, I don't know. All right. Progress update. We're like an hour and 30 minutes later and we, we got four shells. Uh, yeah, nice. Although I got some good news. The conduit actually has a really large range. So we only need one for the entire cave. Uh, well, I think I only need one. Hopefully I only need one. An extra heart of sea that I'm not gonna be using. Number five it is. I traveled so much that I made it to the Middleville town. Imagine this wandering trading having shells. Please, please, please. Come on. Hey, move. Bro. Move. Uh... Another progress update. We've made it to the Cherry Blossom biome. I upgraded my game to 1.20. And this is the first time seeing this biome in Minecraft. I'm gonna steal some of this wood and leaves. Oh, this also looks nice, but I don't know if you can actually bone mill it. I hope you can bone mill it. All right, enough cherry blossom. I took all of the stuff I need. Uh, let's get back to getting those shells. All right, many things have happened since last progress update. I got a trident, I got seven Nautilus shells, and I'm getting attacked by uh, 30 of these drowned zombies. And of course, none of these guys have Nautilus shells. Let's go. I actually figured out that the best way to find drowned zombies naturally is by finding these runes inside of oceans. Many, many drowned zombies spawn uh, at the same time over here. But I actually don't know if they actually keep on spawning or once you kill all of them, they don't spawn again. Oh, there we go. We are done. The last Nautilus shell is in our pocket. All right, this is going to be my first time building the conduit in Minecraft. And there we go. We got ourselves the conduit. Let's go. Now, for some reason, I thought I had a guardian farm in this world. But uh, I actually don't. So now I have to go and mine uh, Prismarine manually to build the conduit itself. For those of you that don't know, a conduit actually works when you place uh, Prismarine blocks around it. It doesn't require iron or diamond blocks like beacons do. Alright, we should have enough now. Let's get back to the cave and actually build the conduit itself. Alright, it's almost finished and it's actually already working. You don't need to place the entire thing with Prismarine. But as many blocks you place, the better the conduit gets. Alright, that's it. The conduit is built. We can now breathe underwater and we have night vision underwater. Let's go. It feels so good to be able to see and breathe underwater. Let's go. I've decided what the first step is to turning this place into a beautiful underwater world. Oceans have a sand bottom, so I'm gonna put a layer of sand everywhere to make this cave look like an actual ocean. Alright, so if I want to put a layer of sand everywhere, I'm gonna need a bunch of sand. Luckily, I got one of these things. All I gotta do is put some shulker boxes down, take all of the sand I got in these chests, and then fly back to the cave with all of the shulker boxes. I'm gonna put all of the shulker boxes on top of the conduit. Okay, we're gonna start with the very, very boring part, putting a layer of sand everywhere. Hopefully, this is not gonna take a while because, uh, I think I'm gonna quit. Alright, so that's like the first spot filled with sand. 
I'm gonna take some of these magma blocks. Then I'm gonna place some magma around the cave just to get some more of those bubbles around the cave. I'm not gonna get rid of many blocks because I do want this place to look natural, but in some spaces we do have to remove some of these blocks. Ah, these drowned zombies are pissing me off. Please, just go and die. Alright, another corner completely filled with sand. I'm gonna get some more sand and then I'm gonna place the rest of this sand inside of the cave. And when I'm done, I'll bring you guys back. So majority of the cave has sand now, except we have a small problem. We got some openings like this one that leads to a whole different cave system. Although this one is nice, so I'm gonna keep it. But if you go above it, right over there, as you can see, we have entire new cave systems that I do not want. Luckily, I can fix that really easy. I'm gonna take some of this stone and then I'm gonna use up that stone to cover up the caves I do not want to use. And there we go, that side is finished. I'm gonna do that to all of the sides that have openings and then I'm gonna fill everything with sand. Alright, alright. This entire cave is covered with sand. I also did a little bit of terraforming, not too much. As you can see, I just made a couple of platforms so I can actually build things later on it. As you can see right over here, I flooded this area a little bit right over there too. Just in a couple spots, we got a flat area to build on. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna build something that I've been wanting to build for a very long time. That is a mob switch. Now, if you didn't know, if you can lock up about 70 monsters inside of the world spawn that have name tags so they don't disappear, mobs won't spawn anywhere else on the world. Now, we can build this machine on the edge of the world spawn. So, we can put all of the monsters, let's say, inside of the world spawn, then the mob switch is on so no mobs will spawn and if we put them outside of the world spawn the mob switch will turn off i'm not gonna follow a tutorial i'm just gonna freestyle this build i watched a short from beppo and he made this mob switch look really easy all he did is make two cubes one was green and one was red between those two cubes there was a piston wall to block off all of the mobs in one cube for the mobs he chose villagers first he traded with them so they don't despawn and then he turned them into zombie villagers. Now I do have a villager breeder at spawn, so getting villagers is really easy. Alright, so that's the base for the green cube. Ah, uh, the water is gonna ruin the redstone. I'm gonna have to get rid of all of the water before I can do anything else. Alright, that should be okay, I guess. Let's get the roof set up. Okay, then we'll have to do that again for the red cube outside of the world spawn. Okay, so the main building is done. And of course, I created a redstone loop and this thing is not working. Nice. All right, I think it works. Yes, perfect. All I gotta do now is put some rails towards the building. So all we gotta do is take a villager towards the building. Then we'll have to make him stop right over here. Let's make sure he doesn't go away. Yes, nice. Then we'll trade with him. Now, as soon as you trade with this guy, even if he turns into a zombie, he will never disappear. Now we'll have to do that like 70 more times. If I do one villager at a time, it's gonna take a long time. I'm gonna get like two more workstations so I can try to get like three villagers at the same time. If I can make this villager stay, come on, don't move. Nice. Okay, so we can do three villagers at the same time. With this space, we're gonna finish much faster than we were doing before. Alright, I'm gonna get all of the villagers inside of the building and bring you guys back when I'm done. These three should be the last villagers to go inside. Come on, go, go, go. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, all I gotta do is bait a zombie inside of the building. All right, all right, come down over here. Nice. Okay, follow me inside of this. Perfect, perfect. Let's close this thing up. 
And there we go. We got the villagers locked in with a zombie. Okay, maybe I should open up the farm or else uh, the zombie is not going to do anything. He is really slow at doing his job, but uh, I think it's going to work. Oh my god, I went away for like one second and a bunch of villagers are turned into zombies. Um, uh, I feel bad for the villagers. Okay, perfect. All of the villagers are turned into zombies and uh, the mob switch is basically done. Now, since they're all locked into green parts, no monsters should spawn around my world. Now, to be honest, I don't know if that also counts for the end, so let's check that out. Okay, I think it only works for the overworld. We got plenty of endermen in the end. Okay, it definitely works for the overworld. As you can see, there are no monsters anywhere. The mob switch is finished, and now we can actually move on to the next step in transforming the cave. I want to use a bunch of sea lanterns inside of the water cave. Now, to pull those sea lanterns, we're gonna need to get a lot of guardians. Now, we could go and kill all of the guardians manually, but uh, that's uh, gonna take a long time but i'm gonna do what i'm good at and that's rebuilding farms for enxo4 i'm gonna build a garden farm that is really easy to make and i've built this farm many many different times so it shouldn't be that hard while i'm also in the end i'm gonna take a bunch of sand with me to get a bunch of glass i want to make a bunch of glass houses down in the cave so we could see everything around us if i do remember correctly i used to have a setup like this before but i have no idea where it went Alright, so all we gotta do now is put the sand inside of it and then we'll have to wait. Now while I'm waiting on that cell to melt, I'm gonna be building myself the Guardian Farm. It's really easy and again, shout out to ENXO4. The garden farm is finished, I'm on my way to world spawn to turn off the mob switch. Alright, I bait all of the zombies on one side and then switch the lever. And there we go, the mob switch should be off. And of course something is wrong, why are there no guardians spawning? I think I know why it's not working. I think the red zone is also in world spawn. If I open up mini hut... Oh no, don't tell me the red border is the world spawn, I thought the green border was world spawn. No way. Okay, the red border is a bolt spawn. I'm gonna have to move all of the zombies all the way back over here. All right, it's fixed. It looks messy, but I had to connect those two together to be able to get all of the zombies to the other side. But as you can see now, they should be unloaded. Now, there's only one way to see if this thing is fixed. Let's go to the guardian farm. Yes, 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 yes. It is working. The guardians are spawning, as you can see. And it's also raining guardian. Oh, no, no, no. The sound is insane. All right. I'm going to go ahead and do a small AFK session so I can get uh, a shulker box worth of sea lanterns. And then I'll bring you guys back when I'm done. I got a bunch of sea lanterns. I also got the two different prismarine blocks if I want to use them later. But uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to actually use them. For the underwater houses, I'm going to be using glass sea lanterns and concrete now luckily we have a concrete maker so we have a bunch of concrete i think i'm gonna use white and black concrete i got all of the materials ready to build all of these small houses i'm gonna start by marking out where i'm gonna build them and then i'll start building the actual houses themselves I do have an idea where I'm gonna build them though. Alright, I'm back and as you can see, I've placed a bunch of circular shapes around this area. And over there, we will build the actual houses. By now, all of the glass should be melted. Let's take a look. Yes, we have a bunch of glass. Now I'm gonna use that glass to create dooms around the houses and then fill the houses with white concrete, sea lanterns and a little bit of quartz. Alright, I'm gonna be making all of the houses and then I'm gonna fill them with decoration.
All right, all right. The dooms are made. Although I have no way to get inside, I will have to break the iron doors every time I want to go inside. So as you can see, they are pretty empty at the moment. We're going to fix that by decorating it a little bit. Since this entire build is underwater, I'm going to make like houses for scientists. And you know what represents scientists in Minecraft? Uh, brewing stands. I'm going to use a bunch of brewing stands as part of the decoration. To build blooming stands, we need a bunch of blaze rods, which is not a problem. We have a blaze, well, it's not an actual blaze farm. We got a blaze spawner right over here. I'm just going to farm a bunch of blaze rods, and then we can create a bunch of uh, potion stands, uh, brewing stands. Uh, I forgot the name. Whole lot of blazes later, and we got about two stacks of blaze rods. I'm also going to use bookshelves uh, as decoration. Ooh, I could also do item frames and put bottles inside of them. Furnaces and crafting tables can also be added. All right, so let's place some brewing stands. Oh, not on the ground. Then I'll place the item frames and the furnaces. Can't forget the crafting table. And then we're going to need to get some water bottles to fill the item frames. All right, that's good for now. We'll add some more details later on. Now we'll do the same for the rest of the dooms. Oh, I just completely forgot about the lecterns. Now I have to go and redo all of them. Oh. All right, this should be the last one. Let's get some more decoration for details. We can use chests. I haven't thought about that. Ooh, I can also use flower pots. I'm also going to need some beds, so let me trade for those. I also need some saplings to fill the flower pots. I'm going to go ahead and detail the last homes and then we can move on to the next step. Take a look at that. That looks sick. Don't tell me that doesn't look good. And there we go. All of the houses are fully decorated and just look at this place. This place looks so cozy. Imagine how this place would look like when it's actually finished. We're a step closer to finishing this place, but we're not yet there. The next thing I'm going to be adding to the underwater cave is a bunch of runes. Now, the runes that I'm going to be building are going to be Minecraft-inspired runes. So, I'm talking about these guys. I have a feeling there's a faster way to getting all of these blocks than just breaking them from the rooms. There is a faster way to getting all of the blocks. You can get cracked bricks by cooking normal bricks. I did not know that was possible. Then yeah, normal bricks and shizzle bricks can be crafted. And by using vines, we can combine them with normal bricks to get mossy bricks. There should be a swamp right over there and we can get a bunch of vines from it. Is this the only way of getting vines in Minecraft? If it is, it's really slow. Come on, can I not break these things faster? I think I have enough vines for now. Let's get back to the base. I'm gonna use some of the vines to create mossy bricks and then some of them to create mossy cobblestone. Let me also grab some granite and gravel. All right, we got all of the blocks to start to build these runes. Building the actual runes shouldn't be a problem. All we gotta do is build a small building just like this. Then we'll add these weird pillars around the building. Yeah, something like that. Let's also add a gradient on the ground. I'll use gravel and mossy cobble for that. That actually looks pretty decent. Okay, maybe I should add some more pillars. I have an amazing idea. Let's use these new decorated pots around the runes. We'll place them randomly around the room. That actually looks beautiful. Take a look at this. Now we'll have to repeat that a couple of times. Of course, I will try to make different looking runes, but they're all gonna look kind of the same. As soon as I place these final decorated pots, the second rune is also finished. And there we go. A second rune is built. I'm also gonna add a rune right over here. And there we go, another rune is finished. Right over here, I'm gonna make like a gateway rune. Perfect, perfect, that looks okay. Let's add the gradient in the floor, just like this. Let's add those pillars. And we'll finish it off with some of these pots. Alright, that looks pretty, pretty nice. I kinda started to run out of mossy blocks, so I'm gonna get myself some more mossy blocks and finish the last runes.
All right, this place is starting to get really nice. Take a look at these different runes around the cave. Our water cave at the moment is pretty dark, but we can fix that by using sea pickles. Oh, I have an idea. We can also build an underwater portal rune. That, that would be sick. If I come across one of those portals, I should take the crying obsidian from it. All right, back to track. We need to find ourselves a warm ocean. Would you take a look at that? We found ourselves a warm ocean. Now I came all the way down here to not only steal sea pickles, but also take a bunch of these coral reefs with me. I'm going to be making a small sea pickle farm that's going to provide me with a bunch of sea pickles. I'm going to use those sea pickles to light up the cave. Then I'll add a bunch of coral reefs and seagrass around the cave to make everything look fancy. But first, first we're going to have to collect a bunch of coral reef. My friends, my friends, the end is near. This place looks beautiful. I actually want to live here. Like, I mean it. I want to stay inside of this cave. I do not want to leave this cave. Before I do anything else, I want to ask you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. The amount of work I put in my videos is insane. And if you're watching right now and you aren't subscribed yet and you like the video so far, I want to ask you to hit the subscribe button down below. If you don't, Come on, still hit that subscribe button down below. All right, so the main cave is done. Now, I do still need to add one important thing. And that thing is adding ocean life to our underwater cave. Now, we already have life in our underwater cave. Those are the glowing squids, but like, let's be honest. They're kind of boring. I want to add turtles, dolphin, and fish to the cave. Now, luckily, it's not hard to get all of those. So we'll finish this really fast. Now I'm gonna start off by name tagging the glowing squids so they don't despawn. There we go. So we have a pretty decent amount of glowing squid around our underwater cave. There is a ocean on the other side of the river that has dolphins. So I'm gonna make a small canal for us to be able to take the dolphins inside of our cave. 
All right, so now we'll have to fill this thing with water and then we'll go look for dolphins. Oh, there they are. There's another one. I have no idea how many dolphins you can hold at the same time. I hope it's more than two because there's a third one. All right, the number is four, but uh, I have no idea where my fourth one went. All right, follow me, follow me, follow me. Where's the third one? Boy, come over here. All right, we got three dolphins inside of our cave. I have no idea what they're doing, but uh, yeah, it's okay. We'll do that a couple more times to get enough dolphins inside of our cave. All right, this one is the last one. I think I got about 15 dolphins inside of our cave. Honestly, why not? Let's get some squids. Like, if we get glowing squids, we can also get normal squids, you know? I don't discriminate or anything. All right, let these two be the last ones. I don't want that many normal squids. All right, we got squids, we got dolphins, and we got glowing squids. Let's move on to the next one. I found myself some turtles. I locked them up, and now I'm about to breed a bunch of them. Breeding these guys is annoying because you gotta wait until the turtles are able to breed and once they breed they spawn in these turtle eggs and those turtle eggs also have to hatch. I'm just gonna sit back relax watch some Netflix while these guys are breeding and I'm gonna try to get as many turtles as I can. Since this thing is pretty close to this river we can actually just transport all of these when they grow up. Multiple Minecraft days later and as you can see we got a bunch of turtles i'm gonna take all of these guys with me back to the river oh this is actually easier than i expected we're almost there come on come on follow me boys follow me no get back over here why is he going there come 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 oh my god all right all right everything is under control we're almost there well there we go we got all of the turtles inside of the cave now i have to spread them out wait where are my dolphins uh okay this is this is really uh, uh this is weird i'll get some more dolphins i guess they despawned for some reason or they died of suffocation i also got a bunch of extra turtle eggs if i need to get some more turtles all right our final sea life is going to be tropical fish now i want a bunch of tropical fish like i mean a bunch a bunch so i'm gonna fill all of these shulker boxes with water buckets and take all of these shulker boxes with me to a warm ocean now in a warm ocean they're basically infinite tropical fish so getting all of them should not be a problem all right we are set in a warm ocean now let's hunt for the fish there we go the first tropical fish are catched now we'll have to do that like 300 more times let's go all right all right the first shulker box is filled with tropical fish I'm gonna go have to fill about like uh, 12 more shulker boxes but when that's done we are basically done with the underwater cave. That was actually faster than I thought. I got all of the shulker boxes filled with tropical fish. Some of them also have puffer fish but hey that's okay. I'm gonna place all of the shulker boxes right over here. Then I'm gonna start releasing these guys over here. Now I do not know if these guys will spread by themselves. I hope so. If not... I'll go around and place some of these fish in, uh, you know, the corners where no fish are uh, coming. Oh, this is nice. It looks like they are spreading around, so I don't have to do it manually. Okay, just to be safe, I'm just gonna go around and do it manually too. I was kind of scared that the amount of fish I got weren't going to be enough, but uh, they're more than enough. All right, all right, all of the fish are placed down uh, i'm just gonna do one more thing and then i'm basically done you see this thing right over here it's pretty boring let's buff this thing a little bit up this already looks much much more better than it used to be and there we go it's officially done we have transformed this ugly cave into a beautiful underwater vault i'm gonna end the video with asking you to hit that subscribe button down below if you're not subscribed yet and yeah enjoy the time lapse
This is a giant sniffer. Huh? Oh, wait. I mean, this is a giant sniffer. The problem is, sniffers are really boring. So, I built a giant sniffer with a village inside of it. Because normal sniffers are boring. This village has a bunch of houses, a beautiful sky with hanging stars, farms, cliffs, water ponds, and even a spooky cave. And all of it was done in hardcore Minecraft. Before we can do anything else, we're gonna have to do something really boring. And I mean it, it's really boring. See, this right over here is my base. And as you can see, there is pretty much nothing over here. If I wanna go ahead and build a giant sniffer, I'm gonna need a clear area. Well, you can already guess where this is heading to. We're gonna have to get rid of all of this land. I'm not gonna use any TNT dupers. I'm gonna do it by the classic way, just mining blocks. Will I regret it? Well, possibly yes, but uh, let's not talk about it. My villager friends right over here are kind of standing in my way, so I'm gonna have to move them. All right, sir, can you move out of here? Please don't don't make this difficult. Just get out of your spot. Oh my god. You know what? This guy pissed me off. I'm gonna kill him and because of that all of your friends are gonna die. This is on you, man. I did not want to do this. The next thing I want to do is put down a bunch of chests so we can collect all of the blocks that we mine. On this channel, we don't waste any blocks in Minecraft. We collect every single thing. I think the only thing left is to set up a couple of beacons so we can mine everything really quickly. One right over here for this side should be enough and and uh, we'll add some more later on if we need one. There we go. So the beacon situation is fixed. The villagers are gone and we got a bunch of chests. I think it's time for me to start digging everything out. I have no idea how long this will take, but uh, let's hope I finish it quickly. Guys, there's a wandering trader that's trading Nautilus shells. I don't even have my shaders on, but I don't have time. This guy despawns really quickly, so I have to put him inside of the vote trading system and trade as much of Nautilus shells as I can. Getting shells less time was difficult. I do not want to do that again. All right, 1DT is inside of the system, and now we can actually trade as many shells as we can well before he despawns i'm gonna trade with him and then i'm gonna finish terraforming this place we're almost done my friends my friends take a look at this beautiful flat place after so many hours i am finally done and i'm happy to say that this place is flat Editing Mogwin here. I just want to show you guys how long it took to clear the base. Almost 8 hours of digging dirt. If that doesn't show how dedicated I am to building this thing for you guys is... Well, I don't know. So if you're new here, smash the subscribe button down below and join my discord to claim your OG rank before I hit 100k subscribers. So not only have I flattened out this place, but I've also organized my stuff. As you can see right over here, I made an area for all my chests and I organized most of my stuff. It feels so good to have an organized temporary storage system. With that out of the way, we can now focus on getting the materials for our giant sniffer. This sniffer is gonna need a bunch of materials, but luckily a bunch of them are easy to get. And that's because I have most of the items I actually need. Like for example, we're gonna need a bunch of concrete. But luckily I got one of these things and as you can see, we have every color of concrete we need. We're gonna need some black concrete, a bunch of yellow concrete, also a bunch of red concrete, and then a bunch of cyan concrete. And then I'm gonna need some black and brown concrete powder. And there we go, that's probably already about 50% of all the items we need. I'm gonna place all of these shulker boxes with all of the items we need right over here so we can see our progress. The next item on the list is blackstone. I'm pretty sure you can get blackstone from bastions and there should be one not far from here well 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 i have found the bastion i'm gonna need some of these blackstone bricks and then normal blackstone but from the look of it i don't see normal blackstone spawning inside of this bastion so we'll probably have to get it from somewhere else all right i think i got more than enough of blackstone bricks while i'm already inside of the bastion why not explore it a little bit Ooh, i got some of these templates let me take them with me these templates have been out now for a couple of weeks and i don't think 
I've ever used them in my hardcore world. I'll use them later on if I don't forget about them. I need the normal black stone and you can find those in the Basel Deltas biome. I hate the Basel Delta, so I'm gonna do this quickly. Right over there, the black stone is inside. And again, with this normal black stone, we also don't need a lot of it, so we can get this thing done fast. And there we go, the normal black stone is also finished. I also need gold blocks for the sniffer, but I do have a bunch of gold blocks from my gold farm, so that item is also finished. And there we go, we can add another shulker box to our collection. The next item on the list is copper. Now luckily, I got a bunch of it, but uh, I have to cook it first. So I'm gonna set up a furnace system right over here so I can cook the copper automatically. All right, that should be done. All right, then we'll fill the furnace with the copper, but I'm gonna mine some more because I think I'm gonna need a bunch of it. I even ran out of coal, so I'm gonna mine all of my core ore. So while the copper is gonna cook, we can go ahead and collect the next item on the list. The next item on the list is terracotta. For that, I'm first gonna get myself a beacon. I got my beacon and now I have to find a bad lime spy him, but luckily I know where one is. There we go, we have found the Badlands biome. You can actually insta mine terracotta with haste 1, so we don't need to build a full beacon. We got the beacon, we got shulkers, now it's time to collect a bunch of terracotta. That honestly shouldn't take that long. Alright, terracotta is collected. We can add some more shulkers to our pile. I also need some green terracotta. For that, I will have to burn down some cactus for green dye. We're getting closer and closer to getting all of the materials for the sniffer. The next block we need is some prismarine blocks. And we got a lot of prismarine blocks from this garden farm. The next item I need that I don't have is warp wood. For that, we will have to mine it manually in the warp forest. I can also use a farm, but let's be honest, I'm not gonna waste my time building a farm for warped wood while I can just do it manually super fast. I also need the striped version of this warped wood and I'm gonna save myself some time by doing it before I mine the warped wood itself. We got a bunch of striped and non-striped warped wood, we can add some shulkers to our stack. The next item, we're gonna need a bunch of it, and the only way to get a bunch of it is by making a farm. I'm talking about moss blocks. The moss block farm that I will be making is pretty small and compact, but it should be able to provide us with more than enough of moss blocks. This is a fully automatic farm, so I'm gonna build it inside of the world spawn. I forgot the most important item of a farm, the moss block. Alright, let's continue building this thing. A little ninja star shape, just uh, like this. Uh, wait, I, I can't follow anymore. Mr. Chapman, you're, you're pretty fast for me. But of course, you're not the problem. I'm just very stupid. Alright, so the lava goes inside of here and uh, that should be able to provide stone. I was pretty confused on the first two sides, but I think I know how it works now. Something is wrong. It's, it's not working. I... I oh, what is this? The middle block, which is supposed to be a moss block, keeps changing into cobblestone. Why are you doing this? I can't figure it out. I, I, I literally cannot figure it out. Alright, it's probably me doing something wrong or this farm is outdated. I'm gonna just break this thing and uh, build a different farm. Oh my god, that was a waste of time. Alright, I'm gonna build a different design and bring you guys back when I'm done. The moss farm problem is definitely not a problem anymore. This moss farm is insane. I, I don't know the name of the content creator, but I will link him down in the description. This thing has been running for about 5 minutes and take a look at the moss that it's collected. Although I've been testing it out for a little bit longer than 5 minutes, uh, as you can see I got a bunch of it in a shulker box. The last big item I need to collect is mangrove wood. Now mangrove trees aren't the easiest trees to farm as you can see. Besides the logs spawning very weird inside of the tree, uh, getting a sapling 
saplings is not like your usual tree. That's because the leaves don't drop saplings. You need to get yourself proper ghouls, and these proper ghouls grow on side of the tree. Now I'm wondering, can you use these proper ghouls inside of the tree farm from Enex of Form? Let's test it out. I mean, it it, it looks like it's working. Uh, it's uh, okay. It's 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 it's. Yeah, it, it's it's not working. Yeah, that, that's definitely not supposed to be there. All right, so we're gonna have to farm the mangrove manually. Now, before we can farm a bunch of these trees, we need to get a bunch of proper ghouls. Now, luckily, there are very, very small, easy farms that make a bunch of proper ghouls in a matter of seconds. I'm gonna build one of those small farms. I got all of the materials, let's build this thing. If I flick that lever, this thing should uh, start working. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Why, why is this coming out from the top? That's not supposed to happen, I think. Or, uh, the, the farm is working. That doesn't matter anymore. This thing is so loud. Oh my god. But, oh, it's so fast. Uh, yeah, I, got, I, I think I got more than enough of proper ghouls. All right, so now we'll take all of the proper ghouls, get myself a bunch of bone meal, and then I'll start farming mangrove trees. I hope farming the mangrove trees doesn't take that long. After this, we just have to get some small random blocks and then we can start building the sniffer. All right, I'm gonna stop wasting your time. I'm gonna go ahead and farm the mangrove trees and then build the giant sniffer. I can't wait. This is fun. I, I, I mean it. It's actually fun. There's a giant sniffer behind me. I'm so annoyed by the copper. Come on, please oxidize fast, because that's supposed to be oxidized copper. It should oxidize by itself, but it's really slow. The sniffer is big, like actually really big. And the inside is even bigger, as you can see. I love the lightning of the mangrove and the red concrete. Take a look at this. Now I've seen how a big fake sniffer looks like. I want to see how a real sniffer looks like. Now you can find sniffers, I think, in suspicious sand and gravel. You have to get yourself a brush and I think you can brush suspicious sand and gravel to get loot. And one of those loot is a sniffer egg. I have no idea if the sniffer eggs are rare. I guess we'll find it out right now. So this is sand and gravel can spawn in water rooms. One just like that. There is no sign of any suspicious sand. Hmm, weird. Okay, I probably loaded the chunk before the update and that's why there's no suspicious sand over there. Look at this. There are two zombies with nautilus shells. When I was looking for another little shells i didn't find them and when i don't need them they always spawn minecraft bro all right i found suspicious gravel let's take a look what we get and that's not a sniffer egg that's also not an egg that is an emerald and yeah that, that's also not a sniffer egg man come on wh where's a sniffer egg what's that that's is that flint that's coal or flint and that's an iron eggs yeah 
No sniffer egg in sight. Ah, this is one of those shorts. I'm gonna take this with me. Another zombie with an the shell. Minecraft, are you doing this on purpose? Ooh, there's a jungle biome. I think you can find suspicious gravel and sand in jungle biomes. I think you can find those trail runes and they should have suspicious sand and gravel. But I don't see any of those runes. What is going on? Back to the sea it is. This is probably my fifth water rune and I still haven't came across any sniffer eggs. Are they honestly that rare? Come on, please give me a sniffer egg. That's all I'm asking. <gasps> oh, that's a sniffer egg. I found a sniffer egg. Finally, a sniffer egg. I've been trying to get one for ages. Oh, this feels good. No way. No, no way. I got two sniffer eggs from one rune. What are my chances of... What? Editing Mogwin here. Sniffer eggs can only be found in warm ocean runes. I've been checking out cold ocean runes for the past hour and uh, that's why I didn't find any sniffer eggs. And also, again, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to join my Discord and claim your OG rank before I get to 100,000 subscribers. Yeah, back to the video. We find ourselves two sniffer eggs. Life is good. So now that we have the eggs, we have to wait until they hatch. I'm not gonna wait around and do nothing until they hatch. I'm gonna be productive. Now the inside of the cipher will be turned into a city, obviously. I want the city to have a beautiful sky with clouds and stars. We can replicate that really easily. All we need is a bunch of light blue concrete. Like I mean a lot. All of these soccer boxes filled with light blue concrete. Then I need some white concrete for the clouds. But I'm also gonna combine it with white wool. For white wool, I'm gonna use the void trading system and just trade the white wool. But first, I have to get a shepherd that trades me white wool. That shouldn't be that hard. We got a bunch of villagers down here. Uh, we can get a shepherd villager easily. Let's get rid of all of these shears and... Oh, white wool. First villager, let's go. Now I have to get this guy towards the void trading system and uh, start the trading. All right, listen, don't make this hard for me, villager. If, you, if you're gonna make this difficult, I'm gonna kill you. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm gonna kill you. Come on, get in, get in the minecart. Get inside of the. Bro, where are you going? Where, uh, get inside of the minecart, man. What, what is this guy doing? If if you go away, out. Oh, uh, there we go. First villager is in place. As soon as this guy is in his place, we can start the vote trading. I only need a shulker box of white wool. I think even less. White wool is collected. Then I also need some sea lanterns for the stars. And I think I'm gonna use iron bars to hang him from the roof. And I think that's all of the items I need to make the sky. We'll start right over here in this corner. All of the walls will be turned into light blue concrete. And then of course the roof itself too. Now I'm not sure what I'm gonna do at the part of the head. So I'm gonna keep that open for now, but uh, we'll figure it out later. Well, 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 that looks beautiful. I did a good job making this place, didn't I? Yeah, I probably shouldn't be complimenting myself. I'm gonna come over here and grab a bunch of you. And then I'm gonna outline a platform for the grass blocks. Just like that. Yeah, t a time jump. Yes, of course. Uh why would I show you guys how I outline this thing? I'm also gonna come over here and grab some sand because I want to create some water ponds. And with another time jump, we got ourselves uh, a water pond. Actually, we got two water ponds. I, I probably shouldn't be doing time jumps. Yeah, uh, 
Uh, whatever. The water points are pretty empty, so we're gonna have to spice it up a little bit. So we should probably start by adding water, then some sea pickles for light, and some of this scalp. Alright, this one is gonna be difficult. Wait, just like that, and now we can easily spread the water. Yeah, and now we'll break the grass. And then we'll spam some sea pickles, and of course, these guys need water, but uh, that's fine. Gotta light them all up, and that looks much better. And then we'll place the kelp. Oh, I forgot about the bone meal. Yes, the bone meal makes this thing even better. I forgot the bone meal, this one right over here. All right, the water ports are finished. Now we'll fill everything up with grass. The grass is placed down, but this place is dark. But there's this thing called glowstone and moss carpets. I'm gonna have to go around and place glowstone in the ground and then cover it up with some moss carpets. All right, carpet time. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This place is now lit up. Now the final thing we have to add before we can start the village is caves. I'm gonna use stone and tough. I also want to use a trick with campfires and carpets, but I first have to see if it works. Will this campfire still give effects if I put a carpet on top of it? Yeah, it, it seems to work. Nice, I'm gonna use this instead of the mountains. All right, mountain building time. I have a giant sniffer, but I got no way to get inside of it. Yeah, that's that's pretty dumb of me. The main head of the sniffer has been turned into a creepy cave. And if you come out of it, you are introduced to a beautiful landscape. Take a look at this. Oh, and the entrance to the creepy cave is also nice. Just imagine a full city inside of this thing. It will look so cool. We also got this waterfall right over here. Very nice. I just realized that the water is missing something. They are missing fish. All right, get inside the bucket. And then I'll welcome you to your new home. No way, these fish are swimming upstream. Do they want to die? What are these fish doing? Bro, get get down. Get. Oh my god. Ah, uh, at least these ones will be safe. I hope you like your new home, my friend. All right, so now the landscape is finished. We can go ahead and start building the village itself. First, let me free these sniffers because I feel bad for them. Y'all can stay right over here. Nice. The sniffer village will be made out of bamboo planks and bamboo. Because I need that much bamboo, I'm gonna create a bamboo farm inside of the leg of the sniffer. That shouldn't be that hard, shouldn't it be? Yeah, I, I, I think I wasted uh, about 20 minutes for nothing. Uh, this, this thing is... Uh, is not productive at all. Yeah, uh, l l let's not do this. Classic way of farming bamboo it is. All right, we got a bunch of bamboo growing. We already got a bunch of bamboo blocks. I think it's time for me to go and start to build this town. Hopefully I have enough of bamboo to finish this town because honestly, I do not want to wait for any more bamboo. The sniffer village has been built and I love it. 
We got a couple of houses. We have a fishing hut. We got a tower. We got farms. We got everything in this town. Yeah, I, I really like it. Now, we are missing a bunch of details to this village. Like, for example, a pet. I have an idea in mind for the pet. But for that, I'm gonna need some wheat. And I don't have any of it. So, let me use some bone meal. If you take some wheat and combine it with mud, you can get packed mud. And packed mud looks really nice. You can even turn the pet mud into packed mud bricks. And if you combine it with dirt and some brown concrete powder, you can get a really nice floor. First, I'll go around and spam some of this packed mud. Then we'll do the same for the brick and then the coarse dirt now i gotta go to the end to get some brown concrete powder i just realized that yes a brown concrete will be annoying because uh it's hollow we're gonna have to fill the bottom part before we can place the brown concrete ah uh, that's gonna double our work come on anyway it, it will be worth it all right so the first part of the town is finished and i really like it now I do need to get a bunch more wheat. Now we can solve that really quickly. All we gotta do is find the village and then steal all of the hay bales. And just like that, we got 40 hay bales from one single village. We got more enough packed mud to finish this build. The flooring has been placed, the buildings have been built it's time to get the villagers inside of this thing but first we're gonna add some beds bed 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 enough beds for every single villager now getting villagers inside of this thing will be very easy since we have a villager breeder right next to the sniffer all we gotta do is add a railway from the breeder inside of the sniffer and then we'll take the villagers inside of it if we connect these two we can take all of the villagers to the sniffer all right boys go 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 i gotta make sure they don't escape like the guy that just did i gotta be fast yes yes and yes nice oh there are more i forgot all right perfectly all of the villagers are inside of the sniffer we are down to the last part of the build and that's the detailing of our village i'm gonna start by stealing some jungle trees and some vines i can also take these cocoa beans then i'm gonna grow the saplings i already have to get some more saplings and also some more cocoa beans I will also use melons because, you know, melons spawn in jungle biomes. And of course, bamboo. What about flowers? Maybe these big roses. I don't usually use these roses in jungle biomes, but let's do something different. Then of course, the bamboo. We'll add some bamboo around the entire village because it looks beautiful. Then we can add our jungle trees. One over here. Nice. And maybe one big one right over here. Yeah, that looks good. We can also use these flowering azaleas, they look really nice. And also the melons, but I only got 7. Ah, forgot about the cocoa beans. And of course the vines, because these trees look pretty naked. Maybe some vines on the mountain too. And then the final touch is spamming bone meal everywhere. Yeah, that definitely looks beautiful. It's so peaceful in here, I, I wanna live inside of this village. I don't wanna get out of it anymore. Now it's the turn for the spooky cave. This spooky cave is not that spooky. I'm gonna turn it into a treasure room with a throne. Alright, I'm back. I turned this place into a treasure room. All I did was spam a bunch of gold blocks some barrels and i made a throne in the corner as you can see and uh villagers are working here why are you working boys ah it's the barrels the, the barrels are attracting the villagers uh, okay this is the throne for the king or the spooky man or the king of the cave I, I don't know the sniffer and the village are done i'm happy with how this place looks i think the only thing that annoys me right now is the outside of the sniffer uh, it's pretty basic so we'll change that i'm gonna get rid of everything except for my storage system and just spam the place around the sniffer with trees and bone meal i will also move the portal that takes me to the nether roof inside of the sniffer the top of the sniffer is pretty empty i can actually turn it into a base so i'm gonna set up my portal right over here also take a look at the day counter we're five days away from 1000 days bro that's insane i want to finish this project before i hit a thousand days so i'm gonna have to start working fast I'm gonna get rid of the villager breeder. This thing has been here since the start of my vault. Don't worry, I'm not getting emotional. Also gonna get rid of this glass cage because I don't need it anymore. And this sugarcane farm. Like, bro, I have an automatic sugarcane farm. Why do I still have this thing right over here? I'm gonna do a little terraforming just to make it look better and nothing too much. And then the last thing I wanna get rid of is my vote trading system. I will miss this system. I will definitely build it again because this is like 
like one of the best things you can build in Minecraft. Now the storage system will just stay right over here. I will try to hide it between trees. If it still pops out, I'm gonna move it on top of the sniffer. If I try to move it right now, I will not have enough time to finish this project in thousand days. So we'll do it another time. All right, perfect. Everything is gone except our storage system. I'm gonna go ahead and light this place up using glowstone and moss carpets. Hopefully that doesn't take a long time. Okay, glowstone is placed down, timer is sticking off, we still got some work to do. Let me first get rid of these beacons. And then let me grab some of these azalea plants and a bunch of bone meal. And now it's all about spamming these trees around. Got three Minecraft days left until I reach a thousand days, so I have to hurry up. Everything is covered with trees. I'm gonna grab some more bone meal to finish the last part and that's just spamming this place with bone meal. We got a day and a half left until it's a thousand days. I gotta be quick. I wanna finish it before I hit a thousand days so I gotta be fast, 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 fast. This place is starting to look like a jungle but uh, I like it. We're on day 999 and I'm on my final patch. I'm gonna make it before a thousand days. I'm so happy. I am done. The sniffer is built, the outside looks beautiful, and I'm about to hit a thousand days in Minecraft. The sniffer looks beautiful. Just take a look at it. It, it actually looks beautiful. Man, woo. The copper is also starting to oxidize, uh, even though it's really slow. But uh, yeah. Oh my god, phantoms. The villagers are also living their life inside of the village. Uh, everything came out perfectly. Only stupid Mogwin can miss the sunrise of day 1000. Are you serious? I've been waiting 1000 days for this moment. How can I miss the 1000 day counter switch? Uh... Anyways, we made it 1000 days in Minecraft. As you can see, we've built a beautiful sniffer. I'm super happy. I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank every single one of you that is still watching. If you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button down below. Your support means the world to me. I hope you enjoyed the final time lapse and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.